Hey friends, today we have something really special. This is My Corsia, and it's a visual novel with art inspired by that of Junji Ito, who in my opinion is one of the greatest horror illustrators of all time. I love playing visual novels and narrative-based games with you guys because it gives us an opportunity to speculate and talk about the story as we play. I know you guys love doing that, I love doing that, it's honestly a blast. But this game in particular really grabbed me just based on the screenshots. The art in this game is legitimately disturbing. So fair warning of course, if that's not your thing, but I've seen like three, four screenshots from this game and that alone was enough to sell me on buying it. We have got to check this out. I can't wait to play it with you guys. Now, this game has three chapters that are broken up into three doors and each of them can be completed in any order. So there's probably going to be three videos associated with this game and I imagine behind each door is some pretty terrifying stuff. Now, before we get into the game itself, I want to remind you guys of something. Every interaction you have with people, either online or in person, leaves an impression. Even if it's a very small interaction with a stranger. And when we approach every situation with kindness first, I believe that that has a ripple effect. After experiencing kindness from someone else, I think that those people are more likely to take that into their personal lives and spread it around. Even if it's a small interaction in like the YouTube comments of one of my videos. I see how kind you guys are in the comments, especially to new people. And I genuinely appreciate that. I think that's one of the reasons why our comment section is so positive. It's a ripple effect. Everyone treats each other with respect and gives each other the benefit of the doubt. It's a mantra that I try to live by, and I just wanted to remind you guys that even small impressions can make a big difference, especially if these people aren't receiving kindness from others very often at all. Love you guys. With that being said, here is my Corsia. Now for the video itself, I'm going to be shrunken and up here in the upper right corner so I don't get in the way of the text on the screen. I really want you guys to be able to read that. So here we go. Let's open the door, find out what's behind it. Welcome to a world of distorted minds. I don't know what that means. They're laughing at me. My eyes were burning. It felt like hot coals were lying on my eyelids. I slowly opened them and attempted to heave myself up from the cold asphalt. But I failed. My whole body was heavy and my head felt like it was being squashed by a hydraulic press. After a few attempts, I finally succeeded and tried to make out where I was. The fog in my mind lifted slowly and I realized that I was in a dark alleyway. My vision was still blurry and I had trouble keeping my eyes open. But I could tell that I had never seen this place before. Slowly, my heart began to race. Was I abducted? Bugged? What happened to me? I hastily checked my body, fortunately finding no wounds. Why was I feeling this weak then? Maybe I was drugged? I like these images. I think they're real photographs, but obviously heavy post-processing done. As I tried to recall what might have happened to me, my eyes finally focused. I could see a house in front of me. It was the only house on the street with its lights on. The dirty yellow glow shone through almost every single visible window. I felt some relief knowing that the tenants were awake. Perhaps they could tell me where I was. I approached the front door. It took me some surging to find the doorbell through an overgrown ivy. A deep gong rang, rang out from within the house when I pressed it. The sound, amplified by the cold wind cutting through my shirt, made me tense up. What an odd choice for a doorbell sound, I thought while rubbing my upper arms to warm myself. I waited. No one answered. My mind was twisted in confusion. Why was no one coming? I rang the doorbell again. Then I tried knocking. No response. No one was coming. I didn't understand. Did they forget to turn off the lights and go on vacation? As a last resort, I tried turning the doorknob and... It actually opened. This worried me. Did something happen to the family living here? Perhaps I should find a phone and call the police. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the street. My heart started to pound as my body tensed up. I wanted to dash into the house, but my feet refused to move. What was that sound? Was someone out there? Pictures of, another wor pictures of otherworldly monsters and armed kidnappers popped into my mind as my eyes scanned the darkness. The world was silent once more. I was still on edge, but my body slowly started to relax as I regained my composure. I decided I didn't want to try to find out what that was. 
Cautiously, I step through the threshold and firmly close the door behind me. Hmm. Inside of the house looks a lot more modern to me. I entered a dimly lit hallway. The contours of minimalist furniture will, were illuminated by the street lights outside. I felt an immediate lurch of guilt as I was trespassing into a stranger's home. Yeah, that's gotta be surreal. Hello? Is anyone there? No answer. The house was eerily quiet. I guess we're a character named Scott. I cautiously ventured further down the front hall and stopped in front of one of the doors. A dim yellow light seeped silently through the bottom crack. I turned the knob. Locked. Then the next one. Also locked. They all seemed to be. I frowned. Why were the lights behind these doors lit? It gave me an uneasy feeling. The door at the very end of the hall was the only one that I hadn't tried yet. I grasped its handle and turned it slowly. It swung open to complete darkness. Once again, my body tensed up while my mind started to conjure horrific images. A beast with dislocated limbs and crooked teeth creeping toward me from the darkness. A floor littered with corpses and walls stained with blood. A giant spider sitting in a corner waiting for its chance to strike. I wonder why this is where your mind is going? In a random house? I don't know. My hand shook as I reached to flick on the light. It was an utterly ordinary bedroom. <sighs> My heartbeat slowly calmed down as I realized that I seemed to be safe. I felt almost silly getting scared of nothing. A quick, searched, a quick search yielded nothing but barren, dusty shelves. The bed was the only meaningful object present. Slowly but surely, a wave of fatigue washed over me. With my adrenaline rush fading away, I found that I was more exhausted than I had realized. That, especially um, the little post-processing effect they have, really makes me think of that feeling where you have a panic attack, and then whether you realize or your subconscious realizes that everything's okay and you don't have to be in a fl fight or flight response, and you literally feel your body like, like that calm wash over you. you it's a visceral feeling and this made me remember that like a worm wiggling its way into an apple a single thought slowly invaded my mind i had to sleep trying to fight it made it worse as if some outside power was affecting me sleeping in a stranger's bed in a stranger's home was the last thing i wanted to do right now but it was soon the only thing i could think about as my consciousness faded i had to sleep the world turned dark and the soft covers of the bed pulled me deeper and deeper into the black abyss. And here we go. My Corsia by Distorted Mind Comics. Oh my god. I like the juxtaposition between the, um, like, disturbing anime aesthetic and then the real world from the intro, which were real photographs, just with black and white. That's really cool. So here's where we actually get to choose the door to start. Um, I know we can do these in any order. This looks like a normal door. This one has fingerprints on the sides, and this one has slash marks um i guess it doesn't matter what we pick let's go ahead and start with the left one here the cat pets is what it's called okay well i hope nothing bad happens to the pets because we definitely don't like that I shot awake, panting heavily, my clothes sticking to my skin due to all the sweat. My eyes darted around the room, but everything was quiet. I seemed to be safe. A nightmare? Seems like I just had a nightmare. I couldn't remember it anymore, but it must have been horrifying. Chills were still running down my spine. It was just a dream. Just a nightmare. Nothing more. After calming down, I decided to take another look around the house. The fact that no one was here, even though the lights were on, was still nagging at the back of my mind. 
but I was more confident that I'd be able to find help now that it was daytime. I left the bedroom to retry the doors just in case. They were still locked, I just wanted to go home and take a shower. I smelled my clothes and they indeed had started to smell slightly sour. Ugh. The place seemed to have nothing left to offer. I'd better... I'd be better off out in the streets now that it was daytime. If I wasn't missing my wallet, then I would be getting something to eat as well. I was starving. I left the house for the bright sunlight. The back street didn't seem so bad anymore. I found it to be rather, rather cozy and quaint. I made my way down the path until I heard the faint sound of conversation in the distance. A weight lifted from my heart when I first glimpsed people walking around in a pedestrian area. There weren't many of them. As I looked around, I got the feeling that this was a rather small town. Yeah, they still don't know where they are. Hmm. Trees and flowers were planted at regular intervals, which gave it more of a, ri a rural atmosphere. It didn't matter. I could finally ask for help. Excuse me, could you tell me where I am? The woman blinked at my approach. She frowned and scowled in my general direction. This is... Kajamath? Kajamath? She looked uncomfortable talking to me, so I thanked her and let her be. Kajamath. I'd never heard of a town with that name. Where? How did I end up here? The thought of being somewhere I did not recognize scared me, I imagine. How was I supposed to get back home if I didn't have the slightest idea of where to go? I took a deep breath to calm myself down. My next best bet would be asking someone to allow me to make a call from their mobile phone. I approached an older woman in a business suit. An older man. Excuse me. Excuse me, may I use your phone? I'm a bit lost and would like to call a friend of mine so he can pick me up. His lips curled into a grimacing frown. Uh, sorry. I'm in a bit of a hurry. I approached person after person, but I had no luck. No one wanted to lend an unkempt, half-dressed stranger their phone. As I made my way through a side street, I overheard two elderly women. Women. I heard of some violent incidents recently. Most got away with just a flesh wound, saying that they were attacked by someone or something. Yeah, I heard that too. I wonder if it has anything to do with the pet disappearances. I heard of another cat that hadn't come back in several days. I was so focused on the conversation that I almost ran into a girl. I mumbled an apology until I realized that she had approached me on purpose. Hi. Hi. You need to call someone, right? She extended her hand and offered me her phone. How did you know? I've seen you asking people for one. She nervously shuffled her feet and glanced away. Thank you. It's not going to take me long. I took her phone. It was a red flip phone with a small panda hanging from a strap. The top bar read May's phone. Her background was set to a picture of herself in a pedestrian area. That place in the picture looked oddly familiar, but I was likely just imagining it. Oddly familiar. Hmm. I brushed that thought aside and dialed a friend's number. But the call didn't go through. I tried it again, but the result was the same. Maybe their phone was turned off? I tried my parents' house phone, then my job's front desk, then my boss's personal cell. Each time, the call failed. I was sure that I had the right numbers. Maybe the phone had a bad connection? Uh, it seems like the calls won't connect for some reason. Hmm, maybe you'll have more luck trying a landline. My phone does act up sometimes. You might be right. Still, thank you. Yeah, that's very suspicious. I didn't want to hold her up any longer, so I gave her the phone back. After a rushed farewell, I wandered off. I wanted to quickly look for another way to get in contact with someone I knew. It occurred to me that I should have asked her for directions to the police station. I turned to look for her, but she had already vanished. As I made my way through town, I could definitely feel the tension in the air. She was right. Everyone was on edge. While I was passing by an alleyway, something caught my eye. They were too big to be rats. I couldn't really make anything out other than their eerie, glowing eyes. Maybe it was a cat gang searching for the trash of food. Apropos food, I was starving, but I couldn't possibly ask random people to feed me. And since my wallet was missing, I didn't have any money on me to buy something. Though... There were oddly tempting-looking plants growing nearby. Ugh. 
buds fixed on thick stems were sticking out of the ground. Each plant was surrounded by a number of small mushrooms. As I stared at them, I felt a pull. Their strange appearance hypnotized me, and without me noticing, my feet inched closer. And closer. And closer. Should we eat them? Or do- It's not letting- It's literally pulling my mouse toward eat them. No. I broke away from the hypnotic pull of the plants. Oh my god, what was I thinking? It didn't matter how hungry I was, they may be poisonous, but my hunger was beginning to gnaw at my insides. The game was literally pulling me to click eat them. My vision grew blurry. Who knew how long it had been since I had eaten? Suddenly I, I collapsed and the world around me vanished. It was dark when I awoke. It seemed like no one had bothered to help me. I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My whole body was paralyzed from hunger. Something was shuffling by my ear. I felt the sniffing of an animal, perhaps one of those cats I saw earlier. I couldn't bring myself to look. It lost interest and walked past me toward the plants, and I heard more follow. As they padded into view, I noticed that something was off about them. It must have been my mind playing tricks on me. My hunger was overwhelming. Something about their bodies was wrong. They started to eat the plants. They were smacking rather loudly and made unnatural fleshy sounds. Every now and then, one would pause and give off a low growl that didn't at all sound like a cat's. It was more like a slightly higher-pitched bear growl. After a while, the sounds diminished, and I felt their presence vanish. I gathered my strength and forced myself to my feet. What had just happened? What were those creatures? The violent crimes that I had heard about earlier popped into my mind. My hands began to shake. What would have happened if I hadn't been paralyzed and if they had noticed that I was still alive? I took a cautious look around. Most house lights were still lit. I must have been out for too long. Once again, my body gave off a deep growl. It was as if my stomach was eating itself. I had to get some food or else I was in danger of collapsing again. Should I ask someone living nearby for help or should I take another look around? I'm going to ask for help. I was sure that they'd turn me away, but I was desperate. This was an emergency after all. Un uncertainly, I approached the closest house and knocked. I was surprised when the door actually opened. Hi there, come on in, how nice of you to visit. Visit? Before me stood a fashionably dressed woman with a big smile on her face. She seemed welcoming, but her movements were rather stiff and almost mechanical. It was as if they had been practiced over and over again. The hat, scarf, and the bag around her shoulder suggested she was just about to leave. She seemed to notice my confused look. Oh, the bag? Don't worry about it. I just think it suits me, so I've gotten used to wearing it around the house. Hmm. I'm not buying that. That seemed unpractical, but I guess she was very conscious about her appearance. Now come in, come on in, everyone's already inside. Uh, do we know each other? She took another look at me and seemed to realize that we did, in fact, not know each other. Ah, you must be a new neighbor then. I'm Sabrina, come on in. She disappeared before I could correct her. I hesitantly followed her inside. On my way in, I saw a pet food bowl near the entrance with some of the strange-looking plants in it. Huh. She'd been feeding those to her pet. I peeked into the living room. A man leapt to his feet. Why is everyone wearing lab coats? A man leapt to his feet and saw me he stretched a big hand. And as he saw me, he stretched his big hand out to me. His coat suggested that he was active in a scientific field and that he had gotten here right after work. His other arm hung down limply. Oh, was the other person not wearing a lab coat? His name's Frederick. Hi there, it's nice to meet you. I'm Frederick. How are you doing? I reciprocated his firm handshake and he cheerfully gestured me to take a seat beside him. To my surprise, the girl who had helped me earlier was here as well. I believed her name was May. She gave me a small hand wave. It's starting to feel like a festivity. We should have neighborhood get-togethers like these more often. Oh, right. This is... She turned and frowned in my direction while trying to remember a name she hadn't asked me for. This is getting really weird. Scott. I'm Scott. Right, Scott. He moved in nearby recently, I think, so I thought we should invite him in as well. Certainly, it's nice to see you. Uh, no, I'm not really... Oh, right, give me a second. She rushed into the kitchen and came out with steaming dishes of food. I could make out different kinds of meat, baked potatoes, and more. 
My stomach gave off a deep growl, and my mouth began to water. Any thought of honesty about my origin was gone. The other visitors started piling food onto their plates, and I followed suit. As I devoured it and life came back to my body, I let my eyes wander over to the others. Everyone seemed to be tense, especially Sabrina and Frederick. Their movements were rather stiff. Every now and again they threw glances each other's way, glances that seemed to indicate mistrust. Sabrina seemed to especially be eyeing the cup that Frederick was drinking out of. What the hell? Why? Are they, like, poisoning each other? Every now and then, they'd notice each other's looks, and they put on a fake smile. May seemed like she hadn't planned to be here in the first place. What is going on? Was she dragged into it just like I was? As I was cleaning my plate of its scraps, something important flashed into my mind. Excuse me, would you mind if I use your phone? Sabrina tisked. I'm afraid I don't have one. I never cared for those buggers. She looked over to Frederick. Maybe he can use yours. Of course, I can show you to my house once we're ready to go. I gave off a sigh of relief and thanked Frederick. He waved his hand into the air. No problem at all. Please excuse me for one moment, though. He shuffled out of the room and presumably toward the bathroom. All right, I'll make some more tea. She scooped up Frederick's cup and left me alone with May. I cleared my throat and nodded in May's direction. Thank you again for lending me your phone. I did appreciate that. You're welcome. I hope you'll have more luck with the landline. Yeah, I hope so too. And I guess that was the end of the conversation. Perhaps she felt uncomfortable speaking to a weird smelling stranger. Yeah, he hasn't had a shower. I'm going to go wash my dishes. And there she went. The other two were taking quite a while. Huh, so this is some of the art in their house and these are things we've already seen before. I used the opportunity to let my eyes wander around the room. The walls were dressed with paintings of all kinds, pictures of nature, as well as more abstract drawings. A framed piece, a framed piece of paper and a photograph that was standing on the drawer beneath it caught my eye. The former seemed to be an art degree, the latter a picture of Frederick and Sabrina when they were younger. They were standing somewhere that could be a university campus. Both had, a, both had genuine smiles on their faces. It seemed like their friendship went back quite a bit. But then why was there that... Mistrust. Hey. Whoa. I, I wonder what's going on here. Is this like a front to lure people in to do something? Hmm. I'm so confused. Did she sneak up behind me? I thought I had a clear view of the kitchen entrance. I think I heard some rumbling coming from downstairs. It'd probably be a good idea to check it out in case Sabrina hurt herself. Oh, well, Sabrina has been gone for quite a while. Maybe something did happen to her. Perhaps I should take a look. What about Frederick? May's face slightly tensed up as she heard his name. Frederick is still occupied. The way she said his name sounded almost hostile, but she sounded convincingly confident either way. Is Frederick... Does Frederick have them captured? I felt May's eyes follow me to the basement. And what does this have to do with the flower? Why was there the picture of the flower in the house? I squinted down the stairs. It was almost pitch black. I swallowed back my nerves and carefully crept down into the darkness. Maybe I should have called out to Sabrina, but something told me not to. Why was she down here? Didn't she tell us that she wanted to make more tea? I managed to reach the bottom stair and peeked around the corner. There I saw her kneeling by lamplight in front of a large cage. A basket of the strange plants sat beside her. There, there. It's all right. Take a good sniff of the cup. We need to hurry, okay? I know that he's growing another one. I know he sent one after their parents. I'll avenge them and get rid of my biggest rival in one go. Okay. Sabrina and Frederick are obviously two... Scholars of some kind? Scientists? And they're putting on a friendly front for each other and they're both working on something? She held Frederick's cup up to the bar. Something in her voice disturbed me. Whatever was going on, I wanted no part of it. I returned to the living room as quietly as I could. There you are, all ready to go. Upon hearing Frederick's loud voice, I jumped. 
what I had seen in the basement had made me anxious. I took a quick look around and saw that May was already gone. Sure, I'm ready. Leaving already? I just made more tea. I turned to see Sabrina standing in the living room entrance with a practiced smile. Ah, uh, sorry dear, I'm just not young enough to stay out late like we used to. She put on a playful pout. Oh, you do wound me. Come by again, you know you're welcome any time. We bid our farewells and set out into the cold night. I was glad to leave. What I had seen was still nagging on my mind. Frederick might be in danger. I had to tell him. Uh, um, I hesitated. How was I supposed to tell him when I, myself, wasn't sure what I had seen? But I collected myself and went for it. To my surprise, he wasn't nearly as upset as Sabrina, at Sabrina as I thought he would be. He actually seemed to be more upset at me. I think you should not have snooped around in the house of someone who invited you over. I was left perplexed. What just happened? I thought I was warning him, but, inst but instead I've been scolded like a child. His face relaxed and he gave me his usual smile. It seemed slightly pained, and pained this time. I suppose there's been no harm done. Perhaps he just didn't believe me. I couldn't blame him. I noticed more and more vacant houses as we crept through the town. Some were boarded up, doors had been left wide open. Why are there so many empty houses here? These houses have been vacant for a while now. I was sure that I passed by here earlier, but I didn't notice any abandoned buildings back then. An uneasy feeling started to fester inside of me. Here we are. We stopped before a house that looked much like every other house in this town. He stepped inside. I hesitated at the entrance before trailing behind him. I wonder what is going to be in Frederick's house. They're both working on something, and he might be nervous that I'm going to snoop around his house now. Come on in, no need to be shy. Do you want something to drink? No thanks. Frederick hesitantly grunted and led me down the hallway. I only wanted to use the phone and get out. Everything that happened today had me on edge. So he was disappointed when I didn't want something to drink. And Sabrina was looking at Frederick's cup. So what's going on there? But what if I still couldn't reach anyone? Where would I go? I was balancing a fine line between hope and despair. The phone call would be what would topple me in either direction. Alright, here you are. The phone seemed rather old-fashioned, but at least it had buttons instead of a rotary dial. I picked up the receiver and tried a number. Am I doing something wrong? There's no dial tone. Huh? Let me see. He took the receiver from my hand and pressed a few buttons. He let out a disappointed sigh. <sighs> Not again. Those damn rodents keep getting to my cables. I'll go take a look at it. Feel free to make yourself at home. Ah, in case you get thirsty. He fetched a small bottle of soda from the kitchen, gave it to me, and went into the basement. It seemed like I wouldn't be able to leave quite so soon. Once I held a drink in my hand, I did start to get thirsty. I took a sip and thought about what to do next. Oh my god. We're gonna take a look around. Check the pictures. I took a look at the pictures hanging in the wall. There weren't too many, but he seemed to be pretty cheerful in all of them. Especially the ones with his dog. For some reason, I hadn't seen it around. Nothing else caught my eye. Uh, we'll check the living room. It was only one... It was only one room over. Surely he wouldn't mind. He said I should feel at home, after all. The living room was minimalistic and unimpressive. A TV stood in the corner, gathering dust. His bookshelf was well-maintained, on the other hand. I looked over the books. He seemed pretty interested in biology. I'd love to chat with him about his field sometimes once I get out of this mess. I chose a random book without a cover and opened it. It seemed to be a handwritten notebook. I quickly shut it to recheck the title. It seemed like I had pulled out a fantasy book instead of notes on biology. Evolutionary development, intersections between botany and zoology. That would be a rather weird name for a fantasy novel. But the depictions on the pages confirmed it to be fiction. The pages showed drawings of creatures I'd never seen before, accompanied by detailed graphs and diagrams. Botany and zoology. That must have something to do with the fact that we were seeing those eyes with what I imagine plant-like tendrils and somehow cats are involved? I wonder if his dog is involved too. I wonder if they're each growing different dogs with this merging of botany and zoology, kind of like how they were merging human DNA and dog DNA in that game Canine that we played. The pages showed drawings of creatures I'd never seen before accompanied by detailed graphs and diagrams. I returned the book and went back out into the hall. 
All right, it's all done. I jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No, it's fine. Good thing you didn't catch me snooping around. The phone should be working now. Feel free to give it a try. I'll give you some space. Call me when you're done. He took the bottle I had drunk from earlier and left through the hallway. I had an odd sense of deja vu. I shook it off and started dialing some numbers. They were the same that I had already tried on May's mobile phone. Once again, they failed to connect. How could that be? I was 100% certain that they were correct. I tried all the numbers of friends, family, and even work colleagues I could think of until finally... Yes? Hello? It was a woman's voice that I didn't recognize. So he actually reached someone? I was certain that I had dialed the number of one of my colleagues. Excuse me, isn't this Tom's telephone number? I don't know who that is. Are you another scam caller? Don't call me again. She hung up. All right. Something was definitely wrong here. It might be best to talk to Frederick and see if he could help me somehow. Maybe he had a clue as to how I could get back home. I crept down the hall. He went this way, right? I began to hear some murmuring. A steady chill ran down my back. The sound was coming from the basement. The old floorboards squealed beneath my toes. I saw flickers of a weak light coming from down the steps. I took them as gently as I could. As I held a hand over my mouth to quiet my breath, I reached the bottom and turned a corner. Frederick knelt before a big cage, a small lamp next to him, and held something up to the bars. He hissed to whatever was inside. Yes, yes, you have the scent now, don't you? We must take care of this one tonight. He's curious. He will find the secret much faster than the others. No, no, no. We can't have him make something like you two. It's kill or be killed in this town. My stomach dropped out from underneath me as I heard the horrible scraping from inside the cage. I took a step back, bumping into a wall. Before I could react, I had accidentally switched on the main light. The sudden flood of white blinded me for a moment. Once my eyes adjusted, the first thing I saw was it. Oh my god. And it's... Is that its tongue? Frederick was screaming at me, but I could barely think about him. I couldn't look away from that creature. It was cowering inside a dirty cage that seemed to be too small for it. It's some sort of a dog with thorns on its belly, human-like hair on its skull, and what looks to be some sort of plant-like tendril as a tongue. The morphing of biology, or of zoology, and botany. Features of a dog would also see some elements that were distinctly human-like. Its mouth was way too big, and the inside of it was filled with a seemingly random set of teeth, or at least something that resembled teeth. Could be thorns. Worst of all, though, there were the enormous eyes staring right back at me. Frederick fumbled with the lock on the cage. My feet finally began to move. I ran out of the house and into the streets. All the while... One thought was frantically running through my head. I had to get out. I had to get away from this demented town. With this thought clouding my mind, I hadn't realized that I had exited town already. I was on a big, grassy plain. Breathing heavily and with fear flooding my mind, I had almost not noticed how heavy my legs had become. Soon, I was struggling to stay on my feet, and my vision slowly darkened from exhaustion and panic. I wanted to look back and see how close the monster was, but I was too afraid of seeing it right behind me. I gathered my courage and quickly glanced behind me and, to my surprise, the thing was not following me. I didn't know if it had ever followed me in the first place, but it seemed like Frederick wanted to send it after me to kill me. Realizing that I was safe for now, I stopped. My legs were numb and almost gave in, but I managed to keep standing. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. It couldn't have been real. Every inch of my body repulsed the idea of such a monster existing, but I had seen it with my own two eyes. I continued on at a slower pace this time, and soon came to a small but quickly flowing river. It wasn't a good night to get my clothes wet, but it looked small enough for me to jump over with a running start. I wasn't the athletic type, but I managed to leap over the gap. Suddenly, my feet staggered. A wave of fatigue came over me. It was as if I had stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier, and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest as I tried to figure out what was going on. A throbbing pain pulsed through my back. It was as if something had stabbed me. My feet gave in, and my vision darkened. I could feel a presence near me. The monster? Frederick? Before I could find out, 
my consciousness faded. Was it because we drank Frederick's drink? Okay. I think it was because we drank Frederick's drink, but I want to see what some of the other possible endings are with this. Because we're not done here. Luckily, visual novels give you a feature where you can easily get to sections that you haven't um, experienced yet. So let me show you how that works. We're going to go back into pets here. Interesting. I want to see what Sabrina was working on too, if she was working on something similar. But they were clearly both studying the same thing. So we're going to skip all this, and this time, we're going to eat them. I couldn't really think while hungry, and who knows how long it had been since I had eaten. So now we're back in the alleyway, giving us the option to eat this weird thing or not. This looks like the tongue of a beast here. I think it's luring us in so it eats us. That's, that's my guess. I dug in. They didn't even taste that bad. Kind of grassy, but edible. Although it grew harder and harder to chew with every bite, something red dripping on the ground. I soon realized that a liquid was coming out of my mouth. I couldn't tell if it was blood or the plant's juices. More started to pour out as I panicked and tried to figure out what was going on. While feeling around my mouth, I realized that it had become totally numb. Suddenly, a fleshy chunk fell into the red pool that had started to form before my feet. Was that my tongue? My vision became blurry and my stiff body hit the cold ground. Is that it for us? It was dark when I awoke. I could make out that I was still lying next to the plants. It seemed like no one had bothered to help me. I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My whole body was paralyzed. I felt a sudden sting traveling from my head to my feet, and the pain grew by the second. Something was happening to me. I'm... Am I becoming, like, twisted and contorted into a plant? My hand. It was being bent into a pot, into an impossible position. Not just my hand, my whole body. It was warping, but it seemed like it couldn't handle the transformation. My body writhed and snapped in two. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's obviously a a game over, I guess. Um, now we got the achievement for the last one, which apparently was a correct ending and wasn't necessarily failing, because it didn't give us an option to not drink the soda. So, we're gonna try it again this time, and we're gonna hit don't eat and skip ahead. Um, let's take a look around. No one would open the door for a disheveled tr stranger. Instead of wasting my time going from house to house, I should take another look around town. I should be able to find a police station eventually. I picked a random direction and headed off, but I soon realized that finding a police station proved to be more difficult than expected. The streets were completely empty, meaning I couldn't ask anyone for directions, and the further I went, the more abandoned the apartment buildings looked. Did I wander into a deserted part of town by accident? This street looked oddly familiar though, so just to catch you guys up to make sure we're all on the same page, this is normally the part where we would have gone to Sabrina's house, but we're instead choosing to, you know, find out how to progress on our own. As I wandered through the dark alleyways, an odd feeling started to well up within me. It felt as if I was being watched. I took a look around. My eyes scanned the buildings, which were being barely illuminated by the dim streetlights. I spotted something at the entrance of an alleyway. It looked like a small figure. Whatever it was, it was too dark to make out. My eyes were probably just playing tricks on me. It must have been a garbage can or something, right? I tried to rationalize what I had seen and continued at a faster pace. Was I overreacting? There was only one way to find out. I made a sharp turn away from the main street and abruptly stopped. If someone really was following me, then I would be able to ambush them as they entered this alleyway. I realized too late that they would have the advantage if they had a weapon with them. Someone was there, and I braced myself. Right as they were about to turn into the alleyway, I jumped out, fists raised. The person gave a shriek and stumbled backwards, falling onto the floor. Just as I was about to question them why they were following me, I realized... They weren't a threat. The person who had followed me was a small boy. He looked up at me, his eyes filled with fear. Why... Why were you following me? I slowly unclenched my fists. I... I need help for my sister. Your sister? 
He seemed to realize that I wasn't planning on hurting him and slowly got up. Yeah, she's hurt. I was only following you to see if you were one of them. One of them? I had a ton of questions, but if his sister was in danger, then my first priority should be helping her. Okay, show me where your sister is. His face brightened as he led me back down the way I had just come from. Now that he knew I wasn't trying to hurt him, he became, he became quite talkative. I'm Lanny, by the way. My sister's name is Amy. Hmm. I think it's odd that his sister's name is Amy and the other girl's name was May. And they both have the same letters. I don't know. Probably coincidence. We're currently hiding from those pets in one of the abandoned houses. The pets. Have you seen one yet? They're really scary. How many of these things are there? How many of these weird plant pet hybrids have they created? His words were flowing out like a waterfall. As he made a short pause to breathe, I quickly intersected. What pets are you talking about? And what did you mean when you said I wasn't one of them? You really don't know? Hmm. Well, I don't really know how to explain it. He seemed to be deep in thought. But before he could elaborate, we had already arrived. Amy's in here. We were standing in front of an old abandoned house. Several of the windows were broken. One of them was partly boarded up with wooden planks. Lanny stopped in the entryway. I was about to ask him what we were waiting for when he started whistling quietly. Hmm. It's like Zelda Ocarina of Time when you play something in it. Does a little ditty. It was a slow and somber melody that reverberated through the empty halls of the building. The atmosphere it created sent shivers down my spine. And then, it was over. Lanny stepped into the hallway and I followed quickly behind him. That whistle was probably a warning. And if there's any other noise, if you see, if you hear someone entering the house, they're a threat. That's probably a system they have set up with each other. Seeing how stumped I was, he explained. It's something Amy and me agreed on. If she hears someone come in, she's supposed to run away unless I whistle this melody. There we go. I came up with it today. Pretty good, huh? The melody, I mean. The plan was alright, I guess, but it was Amy's. We made our way inside, walked up the stairs, and stopped in front of a dark room. Not far from the entrance, I could make out a shadowy figure sitting on the ground. Amy? It's me. I brought someone. Amy perked up as she heard her brother's voice. I quickly stepped inside and was about to rush to her side, but jerked back. Her... Her arms. Oh my god, that's the same thing that happened to me. In the death scene. Damn. She ran into one of those plants. What happened? I had whispered it, but it seemed like Amy had heard me nevertheless. I ate a piece of the plants. Yeah. Damn. And then my arms began to hurt, and now... She broke off. How could eating a piece of a plant have caused this? This didn't make any sense, but I had more urgent things to do at the moment. Does one of you have a telephone? We need to call an ambulance. Lanny looked at me apologetically. There's no one at the hospital. They're all either dead or they're too obsessed with the plants or with the pets there's no one at the hospital wait a minute is that why this town seems so abandoned in in most of the areas you go in so what does may know because may may doesn't seem like the others no one at the hospital? And he had mentioned those pets again. Just what the hell was going on here? Is everybody tried trying to grow their own plant pet? Just as I was about to ask, I heard a thumping sound from within the house. Lanny jerked around, fear-stricken. Is it them? Amy's voice was weak. She was about to faint. Her arms must have been causing her a lot of pain. I'll check it out. You two stay here. I tried to sound confident, but my voice shook slightly. After what Lanny had told me, I couldn't help but feel scared. But as the only adult here, I had to be the one to protect them. And so I slowly made my, my way back down the stairs. I heard something yet again. It sounded vaguely like a growl. 
one that was oddly similar to the one I had heard while I was laying in the alleyway. Could it be one of those... pets? As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I could vaguely make out some slight movement further down the hall. It was as if something was... sniffing... the air. I looked around to see if I could use anything as a weapon. There was, indeed, a wooden board lying on the ground near a window next to me. I carefully picked it up and gripped it tightly while inching closer and closer toward the creature. Weirdly enough, it seemed like it was ignoring me. As I was almost close enough to make out what it looked like, it perked up. I stopped. Time seemed to slow to a halt. A foul feeling slowly spread throughout my stomach. I lifted the board up a bit higher and readied myself to attack. And then, it lunged. I closed my eyes and flailed the wooden plank in the general direction of the creature, but only hit empty air. It was over, I thought. I had missed, and now it would kill me. But nothing happened. All I heard was something scurry up the stairs. It didn't... Is it going after... Amy? So, I'm wondering if... Whether you eat one of the plants or whether you drink some sort of a liquid with something in it, then those, these pets are able to track the location of those things. Because the same thing happened to me in the earlier ending. I, I'm assuming I drank that soda and then the pet was able to find me. That's what's happening here with Amy and eating part of the plant. The creature had already reached the top of the stairs and then I heard a scream. It was Lanny. I ran upstairs. Amy was still lying in the same spot, but it seemed like she had finally fallen unconscious. Next to her was a blood trail leading into another room. Lanny couldn't have been... A sound of breaking bones and fleshy smacking leaked out of the room. Oh, wait, he was going after Lanny? I knew what was happening without having to see it. I lifted my weapon without even thinking and was about to step closer to the room's entryway. But I stopped. There was no way I could fight whatever it was, it was with a rotting wooden plank, and I couldn't save Lanny anymore. It was too late. I need to get out of here. No, more importantly, I needed to get Amy out of here. There had to be someone out there who could help us. Lanny's words echoed in my head, but he couldn't have been right. The police would do something about this, wouldn't they? Or the military? I was about to go back toward Amy, but a sudden wave of fatigue came over me. It was as if I had stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier, and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest as I tried to figure out what was going on. A throbbing pain pulsed through my back. It was as if something had stabbed me. What? What would have gotten him? I tried to turn around, but I had already become too weak. My feet gave in, gave in and my vision darkened. I could feel a presence near me. Was it that monster? Before I could find out, my consciousness faded. What? What would have gotten him that time? Was, was it like maybe Amy completed her transformation behind him and something happened there or, I'm not sure. Maybe I missed something, but I'm, I'm, I don't know what would have gotten him in that route. Okay, so there is one more thing I want to check because we didn't get to um, the first time. So we're going to get back to the decision where we get to look around the house. We're going to not eat them. Ask for help. And this time we're going to take a look around and check the study. Entering Frederick's study felt like I was crossing a line. After all, he had invited me into his home and was trying to help me. This is the one area we didn't get to check. But my curiosity overwhelmed me. I was wondering what that thing in Sabrina's basement was, and maybe I could find answers here. I took a look at the table to see what he was working on. I flipped over a picture frame in an open journal grabbed my attention. I decided to sneak a peek at the picture and was surprised to find a photograph of Sabrina and Frederick. They looked older than in the picture that I had seen at Sabrina's place. It depicted them in a park as they were having a picnic. A canvas was set up nearby. Why was it lying around face down? Perhaps he just hadn't had the time to hang it up yet. I turned my attention to the journal. His writing was messy, but I would probably be able to decipher it with some effort. What should I do? Oh, man. Read it. I decided against taking the journal. Reading it was bad enough, but it was the lesser evil. 
I have a feeling that the other people have found out what the plants can be used for. They must be developing their own pets in secret. I'll have to keep growing my own and hope that I'm faster, better, than they are. I should be okay as long as I avoid learning of anything of mine at someone's home. Uh, avoid leaving anything of mine at someone's home. They can only do something to me if they have my scent, after all. I set the journal back down. Now I knew that he was a fantasy writer. That's the only way I could explain what this was about. Especially the terrifying sketches that accompanied the text were something straight out of horror fiction. With doubts gnawing at my mind, I made my way back to the telephone. Okay, so this we've seen. I want to take the book this time. There's a few things I want to do. Actually, two things. Gonna go back here. Don't eat them. Ask for help. And this time, we're going to take a look around, check the study. Yes. We're going to take the book. Normally, I wouldn't steal, but this couldn't be further from a normal situation. I had no idea when he'd come back and how much time I had to read it. As I picked up the book, something fell out. I was startled by the sound and froze. Slowly, I picked it up and curiously took a look at it. It was a small key possibly for a mailbox or a drawer. While wondering about where the key could fit, I heard approaching footsteps. My heartbeat accelerated. In a panic, I hastily put the key and the notebook into my pockets while quickly exiting the room. We just picked up a key. This could drastically change the ending of the game here. All right, it's all done. I jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Okay, so... I needed to rest, but stopping could be risky. So, we're in the same area we were running, but we're getting new options now. So we can actually get an alternate ending here. Let's continue on. It was way too risky. I should keep moving. Hell knows what that monster would do to me if it found me. I continued on at a slower pace this time, and soon came to a small, but quickly flowing river. It wasn't a good night to get my clothes wet. Um, oh wait, I think I... Yep. All right, yours. You found key one. You got the key in the first door? Wait, what? Is that key used for something outside of the first chapter? Hold on, I gotta, I, I gotta check something real quick. What happens if we select the other option there? So is there a key in each of the chapters that does something? Maybe unlocks an alternate ending to, the, to this entire thing? We're not going to eat them. We're going to ask for help. We're going to take a look around. We're going to check the study. We're going to take the book. And we're going to take a break this time. I should really take a quick break to make sure that I wouldn't collapse along the way. So I sat down for a bit and kept looking out for the monster. After catching my breath, I suddenly remembered the journal. Maybe this would be a good time to take another peek inside. We're gonna read it. A small peek wouldn't hurt. I might find some clues to what that thing was. I opened it to the very beginning and began to read. I discovered the cause of the pet disappearances. No one was stealing them or killing them. They just changed. I installed a GPS chip on my own dog and followed it around to see what was going on. Eventually, I found it eating one of those odd looking plants. I tried to stop it, but it growled at me. Never have I seen it act that way before. There was nothing I could do but let it finish. I took one of those plants with me to study it. Not too long after, I noticed that my dog had changed. It was a bit bigger, and its hair was falling out in great quantities. It also started to bark at me, seeming, seemingly for no reason. I tried a bit of the plant myself, hoping to see why it was so drawn to it, but I found the taste nearly unbearable. I set the journal down. I thought I had just heard a sound. I jerked my head around to find the source. There was nothing. Maybe it was just my imagination, or maybe it was time to keep moving. Continue reading? Yes, we know what happens if you keep moving. I awoke the next day to a piercing pain in my left arm. At first, I was horrified to find that it was entirely bent out of shape. That's why his arm was limp. That's why Frederick couldn't use his other arm. I, I never put that together. At first, I was horrified. Okay, why was that of shape? But something inside me suppressed my fear. I, I calmly stood to fix it. At first, I thought about getting rid of it, but the pain had already subsided. I was able to flatten it by beating it with a hammer. I had lost almost all feeling in the limb by that point. What would people think if I went out with a bent arm? I began to look for my dog. The first thing I found were large animal footprints, much too large for its paws. 
water rate. The kitchen had been torn apart and strange hair littered the whole house. Then I found it, or at least something that was once my dog. I could still see the resemblance, but most of its hair had fallen out and its jaw was dislocated. It began to growl as soon as it saw me. Shortly after, it jumped on me with no provocation. It was hard to keep off with just one hand, but its teeth had fallen out, making it nearly harmless. I managed to knock it out and lock it up in the basement. Now I definitely heard something. I felt real uneasy about this, but I didn't want to stop reading. I felt so close to figuring out something crucial. Yep, keep reading. A little more couldn't hurt. Couldn't see any sign of the monster anywhere. I should be fine. All right, where was I? I froze up. There was definitely something near me. And it was close. Oh, I can hear it breathe. You guys hear that? I could almost feel its ragged breath on my skin. My heart was starting to race. My chest contracted to the point where I had difficulty breathing. Oh, that's cool. Uh, kept reading Frederick's journal in the field. All right, we're going to try one more time. Oh, here we go. Take a break. Read it. No. Uh, I think this is going to be the same ending. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that that's basically the entire game there. Um, what? Well, there's actually one more option. Technically. Um, so these plants were stumbled upon by accident. People's pets started eating them and then changing. It, the plant seems to have a different effect on people compared to pets. And I'm assuming that this basically happened to everyone's pets in the town and then people became obsessed with it. And it looks like Frederick and Sabrina were studying it. Mainly Frederick seemed to be the one that was studying it. It's like these almost alien-like plants that changed things biology just appeared in this town. We're going to stay here and wait this time. Didn't think he would be happy with me poking around. Not wanting to test his kindness, I waited. All right, it's all done. I jumped. Okay, I think this is going to be the same. Oh, never mind. That went faster than I had expected. Good thing I decided against snooping around. The phone should be working now. Feel free to give it a try. Yeah, never mind. Okay, so we, um, that is absolutely everything you can do in chapter one. I'm very curious about what these keys will end up doing to the game. Um, I imagine there are three keys to grab. And so far, this is awesome. It's like three, like, short horror stories. They're very focused and interesting something like junji ito would write a concept like that you know uh, a strange plant that changes people and pets in different ways comes into a town and it causes a bunch of strife and you get to see what happens to multiple different people in that town because of that i i love the concept of it really cool stuff and i hope you guys enjoyed it too this was episode one of my corsia i hope you guys liked it um i love you all very much please be safe and i'll see you in the next one